While certain details have been altered for the sake of dramatization, the following true story has been carefully researched for authenticity and is presented as it happened. Surprise is the key. You should be swinging your enemy around so fast he doesn't have time to react. Make sure you cut him from one artery to the other. Be brutal. Be fearless. Slam him to the ground and cut quickly. Show no mercy. We lived and trained in the desert for one purpose. To return to Egypt and overthrow the government. We were ready to face any difficulty for the sake of Allah. We cared for nothing but the Islamic call. We had only two choices. One was to die and go to heaven. Or survive by winning the battle. I excelled in sharpshooting and trained to be a sniper. Whoso fights in the cause of Allah and is killed or gets victory, we shall bestow on him a great reward. Your brother is in paradise, Mustafa. You must allow yourself to be comforted with this thought. And say not of those who are killed in the way of Allah. They are dead. Nay, they are living. But you perceive it not, thus says the Lord. Assalamu alaikum ya emir. Peace to you and God's mercy and blessing. How has the training been going, brothers? It's going well, emir. Praise God. Take your seats. The emir would pay us visits periodically, testing our readiness. One night, he read to us from a Cairo newspaper about a group of missionaries who had been arrested. They were accused of trying to convert nominal Muslims at one of their hospitals with offers of sex and money. Stopped in Allah's name. Death to the infidels. God is great. God is great. Calm down. Calm down. Silence. It was a humiliation for all of us. Being the month of Ramadan, we felt we had fallen short of taking a stand for God. We had to do something. Everyone was furious. For me, it was just one more reason to hate Christians. We didn't want to be humiliated anymore. The Christians say... We vowed to put an end right. to Christian evangelism, the the whatever the cost. And that it's the final inspiration. The Emir ruled out a military confrontation instead proposing a logical confrontation in which we would write a book proving the Bible had been altered and couldn't be trusted. This was something what that wasn't tried before. Brethren, if you wrote a book that proves their book has been altered... And who would write this book, Amir? <laughs> What's your problem? Are you afraid of a book, Khalil? I remember my mother says the Christians cast spells and do magic through this book. And whoever reads their book comes under a spell. And a curse. I will not read it. No, no, that's impossible. Don't argue with me, Khalil. If you believe in Allah in the last day, you must do as I say, Khalil. No, Amir. 
find somebody else. No, no. Ali, I beg you, Emir. Find somebody else to do it. I am convinced there is no one more capable than you to do this mission, Khalil. You are chosen. But uh, you are asking me to be like them, to think like them. How can I do this? Ask me to kill every Christian in Egypt. But don't ask me to read this book. No, not even touch it. No. Your zeal for Allah is indeed remarkable, my dear son, Khalil. You will be rewarded for that. But this zeal has blinded you. You've lost your discernment. Can't you see all the honor and the respect you will gain if you complete this mission? You will be the first to expose the lies of the Christians and Jews. You will receive 500 pounds a month as an allowance, and I will bring it to you myself. We broke camp in the desert, and I returned home. A month went by without me doing any work. Hey kids, what happened the stairs today? That poor lady. Her son ran into the street oh. and got hit by a oh, car. Are you kidding? Sit on the tea and watch it with us. Khalil. Haven't I told you thousands of times not to watch this heresy? We went to watch it. She's your sister! Heretics! I decided to obey the Emir's orders. I had to obey and start the assignment he had given me. I didn't know where to begin. In reading the Torah, I found some instances of minor contradiction. But I said these don't help because the Quran is full of similar differences. If we say these mistakes weaken the Bible's accuracy, then we'll be judging the Quran with the same judgment. I searched for more noticeable errors, but I didn't find any. I read the whole Bible, but I didn't find what I was hoping to find. So, I continue to research. There are no verses in the Bible mentioning the coming of a prophet named Muhammad, not even Ahmed. I've brought you what you need, Khalil. I believe you have to read this. Showing the truth? When you read this book, you will see 26 references to the Prophet Muhammad. Blessed be his name. Peace and praise to his name. References from the Torah and Gospels. 
Why didn't you show me this before? Because I wanted you to read the Bible on your own first. That way, when you finish the book, no one can possibly argue with your conclusions. Khalil, my son, now listen to me. This is very important. This book you're writing is going to be unlike any other book written on the subject. God willing, it will give us magnificent results. God willing. God willing, Ali. You'll see. I set out to examine all 26 references listed in the book. Each one failed to prove anything. I said, Lord, I can't prove the Bible has been altered, and I can't find Mohammed mentioned anywhere in the Bible. What am I living for? Who am I worshipping? But if the Bible is true, then what is the future of the Quran? They can't both be right, because they move in opposite directions. So, I started writing a research paper entitled, Is the Quran God's Word? When I finished, it was between 200 and 300 pages in length. Then one day, the Emir paid a surprise visit. Please just wait for Khalil here. He'll be out in a minute. Thank you. Allah be praised. He's finally begun to write. What happened to you, Khalil? What are you writing? Are you telling me the Quran is not the word of God? If you don't believe me, read for yourself. <laughs> Do you think I'm happy with my conclusions? I begged you over and over to give this assignment to someone else, and every time you said the God had chosen me. You are the one to blame, not me. We paid you a lot of money to expose the lies of the Christians, the infidels, the infidels. No, 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 no. You told me to do the research. Well, I did. I did the research, and their book is the truth. Not only that, the Quran itself acknowledges that Isa, the Messiah, Shut is up. God. Shut up! Don't you dare say anymore! The Quran says, Infidel. Isa speaks in Infidel. parables. And he's Shut coming up. back on the clouds. He'll be the judge of all people. The Surah of Al Madiyah. Isa Infidel. has the ability to create. The Surah of Al Umran. To heal the sick, raise the dead. Oh, Isa is returning on the clouds. Enough. And he will judge the nations on the last day, just as the Quran says. Infidel.
Listen to me. From now on, you and I don't know each other. I'll tell the group you've deserted us, infidel. And if you ever show this rubbish to anyone, I'll kill you myself, infidel. Infidel! Kali. <laughs> but I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for those who despitefully use you and persecute you. Resist not an evil person. But to the one who strikes you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. Fight the infidels because they are without faith. Fight the polytheists the way they fight you. Fight those who don't believe in Allah. Fight, fight, fight. Even if they are fathers, children, and husbands. Kill. Hello, Timothy. This is Khalid. No, everything is all right. I just, I've been wanting to talk with you for a long time. One day, I called a friend from work who I knew was a Christian. I hoped he would talk to me about more of the gospel, but he got scared and hung up. Then something happened that terrified me. Hello, Timothy, can you... I discovered someone had stolen my briefcase, which contained my Bible and passport. Excuse me, did you see my bag? Sir, sir, have you seen my bag? Sir. What bag are you talking about? I didn't see anything. But it has my ID card and my, my Bible, my bag. Sir, sir, you still owe me for the phone call. Come back. God, please hear me. Show me your way. All I want, all I ever wanted is to know you and serve you with all my heart and soul. I have loved you since childhood. My whole life is in your hands. God, I'm so confused. I need you. I know you are one God. Are you the God of the Muslims or the God of the Christians? If you are the God of the Muslims, take everything out of my mind except Islam. And if you are the God of the Christians, then bring light to my heart to worship you. God, show me your way. Show me the truth, please, God. That night, I slept deeply, like never before in all my life. When it was nearly done, I had a dream. Do you still have doubts in me? Who are you? I'm the one you're searching for. I can't remember. Read the book. I love the book. Yes, I know. But I've lost it along with my papers. The book cannot be lost. Stand up and open your closet. You will find it there.
Khalil? <laughs> you must forgive me. I thought I was following the true faith by treating you harshly. Sorry, I'm sorry. Forgive me and let me kiss your feet. Oh my God, what's the matter? <laughs> what happened to you, Khalil? God has guided me into the truth. The God that I know today is not the one I was following before. <laughs> but there is only one God. Yes, ma'am. And he instructs me to love and obey you. And who is this God, Khalil? He is the true God. Revealed in Christ, Isa, as written in the Quran. Stop, my dear. If they hear you, they think you are insane. I will do as you say. But do you believe me, mom? Why wouldn't I believe you? You've never treated me like this. Go, my darling. And God will never forsake you. God will always be with you. <laughs> <laughs> Please forgive me, mom. I forgive My heart had changed. It was changed by love. I couldn't go back to sleep and stayed up until morning. Everything I saw was beautiful. I wanted to hug and kiss everyone I met and tell them I love them. Even the Christians who knew me as a violent and fanatical man. George, good morning. Don't be afraid. It's me, Khalil. I'm not open yet, sir. I, I've come to talk I'm to you. Not open. Please, I need to ask I'm your forgiveness. Please, please. Please talk to me later. Please, I've changed. What? I'm not the same person. I've changed. Please, I wronged you in the past because you are a Christian. Forgive you? You have please, changed? Please, I don't deserve your forgiveness. But please forgive me. Please. Ah. Please. Hallelujah. What does that mean? My friend, you'll learn in time. Forgive what happened to you? Forgive Come me. here. Please. Mm. Forgive you. I forgive you. Come here. Forgive me, George. Come here. I began to change from that day forward. People who knew me, people at work, all saw the difference in my life. Khalil, do you believe that the Lord Jesus is the I had been a hateful, murderous man. I had burned down churches and robbed stores. So many violent acts. But Christ changed my life. Son. And Holy Spirit. When I began to act according to what the Bible says, I became a loving person. I am free now. The sun has set me free. Life is Christ, and death is gain. In the past, death was an ugly, fearful ghost, but death no longer rules. I am now in Christ, and all things are new. Can the leopard change its spots? Can the lion be at peace with the lamb? Can a man consumed by hatred and the violent overthrow of his enemies become a man of peace? For Khalil, it's safe to say that this questions never entered his mind until he met the Prince of Peace, the Lord Jesus Christ. Impossible, you say? Yes, from the human perspective, quite impossible. But with God, all things are possible. I'm reminded of a man named Saul, like Khalil, a violent, abusive man, and like Khalil. He set out to destroy the Christians in his part of the world and participated in the deaths of many, only to discover that he was not fighting men, but fighting God. God brought Saul to his knees, literally, from that prostrate, humble position, this proud, 
angry man cried in despair, Who are you, Lord? To which the Lord replied, I am Jesus, and when you fight against my church, you are fighting against me. This man is best remembered today by the name of Paul, the author of more than half of the New Testament in the Bible. What changed Saul on the inside? What changed Khalil? For both men, it was the same power, the power of love. The power about which I would like to talk with you today. There is no greater power, my friend. God is love. This is what the Bible says. God is all-powerful, all-knowing, and everywhere present. But in essence, God is love. God doesn't want anyone to perish, but for all people everywhere to come to repentance and knowledge of the truth. He wants us to live with him forever in a place called heaven. His only requirement is that we receive Jesus Christ, the Messiah, as our Savior. Here we come to an important point. Listen to me carefully. Khalil had the special experience of seeing Jesus in a dream. Perhaps you are thinking you need to do the same to be saved. That's not the case. Salvation is a gift from God to all people everywhere. The only requirement from God is for us to have faith. Even this faith is also a gift from God. What other than love should we expect from a loving God? Would you like to receive the gift of eternal life? Would you like to have your sins forgiven and become a member of the family of God? The God of love is listening and he will not refuse anyone who comes to him in sincerity and truth. Whatever you have done or failed to do, God desires to bring you into his embrace. He is the God of love. Pray with me. God, you know how much I love you. My loving God, forgive my sins and give me eternal life. Count me as one of those fortunate people who accept you as Savior. May all the glory and honor be yours for the sake of the precious blood of Jesus. Amen. My brother, my sister, if you prayed with me, be assured that God is in your life and you are among the saved. Jesus will be the fountain of your life. Amen.